I added active aerodynamics in the form of a motorized rear wing to this crazy fast RC car, allowing it to automatically adjust its angle based on my steering and throttle inputs. So come join me as we design, build and test it. But first, let me explain why it even matters. Now active aero simply means that the car's aerodynamics can change automatically while the car is driving. In this case I want to have the wing in a low drag position when driving in a straight line for maximum speed and efficiency, but then quickly increase its angle when steering to increase downforce for more grip and better cornering. Oh and we can even use it as an air brake. The RC car I chose is my 1.8 scale Kyosho GT2 with this yellow Corvette body. It also has this wing on it, which we're gonna move up and down electronically. So I designed a mount for a servo motor at the back of the car, along with some linkages up to the wing to move it. With that, we should be able to start building. We're gonna need a standard RC car servo motor to move the wing, a mount for the servo motor, which I 3D designed and printed to fit my specific car, and some 3D printed linkages to connect the servo to the wing. Let's start building! installed the servo it was time to 3d print the linkages to connect to the wing here i even added some metal ball joints to make it move a lot smoother so let's continue with assembling the linkages now yeah that's solid As you can see it's all assembled now so we just gotta test the electronics now. And for that I have a little servo saver here that we're just gonna plug into here. And Alright, so it's actually already sort of working. The only issue is it's not very precise and a little bit sloppy and that is because there is not a lot of leverage on the part of the wing where it gets moved and so the servo has to exert a very strong force over a short distance making it pretty inaccurate. So let's fix that by 3D printing in level for the wing. And all this lever really does is basically extend the mounting point for the vertical servo linkage on the wing a little bit further outwards so that there's more leverage on the wing and that just made a huge difference, it worked so much better now. So now that the mechanism for moving the wing up and down is working perfectly, we have to route the wires of the wing's servo motor to the receiver in order to program the transmitter to move the rear wing. Alright, so I've just finished programming the transmitter here and what I wanted to do is flip up slightly under steering so that we get increased downforce in corners and hopefully the ability to corner faster. That is totally working, check it out! And then I've also made it dependent on the throttle lever here so that when I brake the spoiler flips up all the way and hopefully acts as an air brake and makes the car stop faster. See that? Flips up all the way until I let go of the brake. Now that actually works a whole lot better than I expected, so let's just go outside now and see how this thing handles at speed, shall we? Alright, so here we are now ready for the first test of our active rear wing here. Let's just start driving. And here I quickly noticed that compared to before the upgrade when the wing was at a more shallow fixed angle of attack for a trade-off between downforce and drag, the car suddenly had noticeably more grip on the rear tires which made it oversteer less, showing that even just at these relatively low speeds of around 50 to 70 km an hour, which by the way is about half the car's top speed, the active rear wing was working great and now to actually confirm this wasn't just placebo from me feeling like it had more grip than before, 
I went ahead and disabled the steering mix on the wing through a button on the transmitter. And that basically enables us to compare the performance with the active aero wing versus without. And see how that compares right now. And yeah, I still have the uh, braking thing on, as you can see right here. So this is just gonna be a test on the steering. And sure enough, the car started drifting more easily again. Oh yeah, as you can see, it just slides way more in the rear end. And then when I turn it back on, it, it just grips a lot better in the rear, see that? And then something a little unexpected happened. And then turn it back off. It just, it just rotates like that. Do you see that? That's amazing. And then when I turn it on, that actually makes a huge difference. I did not think the difference was gonna be, oh my God, my GoPro just fell out. Oh no, well, that's not good. SD card error. Let's turn it off and on again. That always works, right? Yeah, I mounted it a bit um, to point out this rear window and it just fell out at the end. But you can see how the spoiler is working here, which is pretty cool, right? All right, so after finding out that the GoPro is completely fine, let's do some more predictable tests. And for that, I'm gonna be going full throttle and then steer to the right abruptly in exactly the same spot two times, one time with the active arrow wing enabled and one time with it disabled. Let's go! This is enabled. So now it is disabled. See that? It just completely drifts out. All right, now it is turned on. I'm gonna do the exact same thing again, just turned off this time. And it just completely drifts out. That is proof that this thing absolutely works. Let's go, that's amazing. Safe to say I'm really enjoying this upgrade I've done. And in fact, I even enjoyed it so much, I kept driving around until the battery was flat and changing it, well, let's just say it didn't go so well. All right, so now we just gotta swap out the battery. There is no way, dude. Look at this, all destroyed. I literally just switched my camera off to change the battery and the wind caught this body here, ripped it off, flew it over there and the linkage just completely ripped off. Unfortunately, at the end here, this linkage got ripped off by the wind and what happened there was I basically took the body shell off to change the battery, laid it over the back of the car like so the linkage was still attached because I haven't made it detachable yet and then the wind basically caught onto this body here threw it away and the linkage was still attached so obviously it got ripped off all right so with that let's repair and improve this linkage now I quickly reprinted the broken top linkage and a two-piece center linkage that is held together by standard RC body clips. But I quickly noticed that wasn't the best idea. Yikes. So I scrapped that and thought of another solution while replacing the broken linkage and servo horse. And what I came up with was just using a 3D printed thumb screw with an M3 nut inserted to make it easily detachable with just a little spin on the thumb screw. And now that it's repaired and upgraded, we can get back to some more testing. Let's go. Oh my god! This time we are actually on 6s lighter, meaning twice the power and speed of last time, which was on 3s. For some reason everything always looks a lot slower on camera than in real life, but just trust me when I say that this thing is really fast. I can smell the tire smoke from here. Jeez. That is just crazy. I also attempted some full throttle runs. Oh my 
freaking odd. But there wasn't nearly enough space to get to full speed. That is way too quick for this place. I was on throttle for like maybe a second and then I just had to hit the brakes. Yeah, I'm not gonna turn the air brake off here because I feel like we really need it. That is insane. Jeez, the wheel spin is incredible. Right, it's cutting out now. With that, my undersized 6S battery was not handling the amperage anymore, so I switched to my larger 3S. Here I started with the wing turned off for some awesome drifting around. And then, when I wanted to have some more grip, I just turned it back on. One thing I noticed with it on was that it wouldn't just slide out by itself anymore. But with some additional throttle or braking input, I could still get it to drift whenever I wanted it to. I also did some braking tests to see how well the air brake works. And yeah, if you're a little better at driving than me, then I'd say it actually stops the car pretty well. Just a little bush landing there. Don't worry, the car was completely fine. No damage. I think now's a good time to go home though. Now that was a ton of fun and honestly, in terms of the active rear wing here, I'm extremely happy with it. You know, this whole project just started as a proof of concept to see if active aerodynamics like this can change the handling of not only real cars, but scale down RC cars as well. And now that I've tested it out, I can say that it's not only noticeable, but it actually makes a pretty big difference, as you just saw in those driving tests. Of course, you could still fine-tune this even more, uh, and test out like different angles and setups. In the future, I may also want to test out how much this impacts, you know, braking, especially on 6S at full speed, which is something that I unfortunately couldn't really test out given the limited space at my driving spot. That is way too quick for this place. And also one thing that I could still see improved is the aerodynamic profile of the swing because the way that it's just flat for most of it and then suddenly curves up abruptly, it doesn't seem like a very efficient design to me, so maybe it would be possible to improve this even further by 3D printing an aerodynamically better shaped wing. But what do you think about this project? And is there anything you would have done differently or you would like me to implement in the future? If so, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.